Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Give, Send, Go Spotlight TV channel. Again, this is where we come together and spotlight some of our favorite campaigns that are on Give, Send, Go, and we get to share about them with the world and the great things that they're doing around the world. So today I have the privilege of having Jeremy Brown on. He's got a campaign on Give, Send, Go right now, and it is www.givesendgo.com forward slash combat Vets, uh, V-W-A-P-O, um, standing for Washington Post, I think. Um, and, and we'll repeat that, let you repeat that in the end if you want to plug that again. But Jeremy, um, thank you so much for being on here. Why don't you just give us a little bit of the background, who you are in, in even your use of Gibson and Go, what, what it's all about. Okay, well, thank you for having me on. It's a great opportunity. And I was actually really flattered to see that this is kind of the launch of a new thing and that the Somebody identified that uh, that I'd be good uh, a good test case, I guess. Right. So, uh, so my name is Jeremy Brown. I'm a retired Army Green Beret, and uh, you know I was a participant on January 6th up in D.C. And the reason why I was uh, convinced to actually uh, put together a Gibson Gibson Go, and Go campaign uh, was because the Washington Post uh, immediate, almost immediately following uh, January 6th wrote an article. It was really a, a defamation piece on combat vets in general, but used me as kind of that lie sandwich. So they named me in the first paragraph, they named me in the last paragraph, and in the middle, they used examples of other veterans that they basically wanted to just classify as crazies or radicals or suffering from this, that, or the other thing. Uh, and it really infuriated me. And so when I confronted the Washington Post, well, first I confronted the author of the article, which who then he kicked me to the senior editor. Um, and I, I said, I, I would like a retraction because your article is completely false um, and it defames combat veterans in general and me, me specifically. And of course they didn't. And so that was when I, I really, you know, wanted to just take them on much in the style of uh, the, the, the kid, I can't, his name's slipping my mind right now, but that took on CNN, uh, the kid that they accused of being the racist from, Oh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Now that you mention it. It's oh, like, Nick, uh, Nick Salmon. Nick there we Sam go. Yep, yep. Yeah. So I basically told him, I said, look, I'm going to come after you and, and it's going to make Nick, Nick Salmon's uh, settlement look like, uh, yeah, look like a tip. So, um, that's the reason why I came to give Sengo go to, to try to raise funds to, uh, to get an attorney or a legal team on board to go after the Washington Post. So, so obviously there are other crowdfunding <clears throat> platforms out there, um, some more popular than others, various, various things. How did you hear about Give, Send, Go versus any, any other platform? Uh, well, yeah, I'm an, I'm an avid uh, per, uh, consumer of uh, alternative independent media and just tracking the censorship over the last, really the last few years. Uh, I knew about uh, those other people that we won't that will remain nameless, um, and I had kind of watched the the birth and the 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 growth of Give Send Go, um, and so obviously that was really the only alternative. Plus, knowing a little bit about the background, the conservative values. Not that it's a conservative site, but that like we discussed before we came on here, you know, you believe in giving people the opportunity, and that every side needs to be heard which is a biblical prop, uh, a, bi a biblical principle. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it was a no brainer for me. Uh, if I were to even try to go on any of the other sites, I'm sure within like 30 seconds, it would have been taken down anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, probably they, you know, they don't seem to take too kindly to anybody that differs from the mainstream norm nowadays. It's, it's quite unsettling. So, um, so in this journey that you've taken on coming, coming after Washington post and, and going after what's the, What's the progress? I mean, what's what's the movement or, or momentum that's been going in this? Well, um, you know, honestly, <clears throat> I, I don't really like to say, hey, that, yeah, it hasn't been good because 
look, every single donation is somebody that's giving out of their heart. They're giving out of their pocket, whether it's $1 or $100, right? What, what they're doing is they're, they're showing through a financial instrument their support. Or, you know, they're sending messages of encouragement and hope. So monetarily, we haven't, you know, really done that much towards our goal because, you know, who am I? I mean, I'm not, I'm not on Tucker Carlson or anything like that. So I'm getting my word out in a, in a, in an environment that people are hearing it, but it's not in large numbers. Right. So, um, but I look at it more as, wow, you know, people really do believe that this needs to happen. And, and my goal is to kind of set the example of, even Nick Salmon settled with the CNN. And I say in my campaign, that's not my goal. I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this to, uh, to make an example of what the Washington Post and Jeff Bezos for the way that they treat the everyday American, which is we can do anything we want to you because if you don't like it, then your only option is through the courts. And we know that you probably don't even have the money to take on that option. So nanana boo boo, stick your head in doo doo. And that's really the way that they look at us. I mean, they have no respect for us and they use lawfare, right? To, to, to break us. I mean, and that's really what we see with, with the FBI and all of these mass arrests, right? they they don't even care if they get convictions. What they want to do is destroy people's lives. And, you know, women have miscarried during these FBI raids. I mean, they've literally led to the death of Americans. And so it's really more of a shot across the bow of these global elites that look at us as their, their serfs, as the peasants outside the walls, and, and they can do anything they want to us because we just don't have the resources individually to take them on. However, platforms like Give, Send, Go give us that option to collectively come together with one, two, 10, five, you know, $50, $100 donations to build something that if we believe in it, we, we can, you know, and I've run, I've run for U.S. Congress and one of my messages was always, you don't need to give a lot. I mean, even if every, you know, if 10% of the people that believe in my message were to just give a dollar a month or whatever. So it really is an economy of scale thing, but see, like we talked about how they isolate us, right? They make us think that we're the only ones that believe in what we believe when really there's millions of us. And yep. so platforms like Gifts and Go kind of get that message that you're not alone. And, and when you see that, you're like, okay, well, then I'll give a couple of dollars. And the next thing you know, bam, um, you know, large amounts of money are raised. So yep. um, thank you guys for, for what you're doing. It's, it's a really great mission. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you, you kind of nailed that. We, one of the, the driving goals behind Give, Send, Go early on was just the recognition that there is, um, one, that there is an over-dependence on, on government to, to just in society to provide for us. And, and the, the strength of a nation is not in its government's ability to provide for its people, but it's, it's people's ability to come alongside each other and help work towards a common goal. And so a crowdfunding platform like Gifts and Go allows a community of people to come and do that together without the government having to be involved. It says, no, I believe in what you're doing. Let's, let's you unite. And it doesn't have to be that I give uh, everything that I have to make that happen. If there's, if there's enough of us in coming together, then we can actually make a change just with um, everybody pitching in a little. And That's right. And, and what we've seen, and this is this is the awesomeness of our journey, is that um, here at Give, Send, Go, is that our our audience continues to expand because of people like you that are using the platform um, and um, continuing to get the word out about what you're doing. But at the same time, it it enlarges our audience of of like-minded people um, and gives us more strength for the days to come as we move forward because the battles of freedom are have still there, there's still some left to be fought like you know who, who was it that said you know the tree of liberty is refreshed by the blood of, of patriots and tyrants thomas jefferson that that, yes. that radical violent extremist exactly so you know th there's a constant need for um 
for the fight for liberty because it's there's always a an aspect of uh, of restriction and, and powers that be that come against it. Um, all right. Well, so, I mean, and it's a cycle of humanity as well. I mean, even if you read yeah. through the Bible, I mean, we we go through a cycle of freedom and you know, that goes into to you know just debauchery and complacency and then slavery back to freedom i mean and, and, and it's never going to end because you're there's always good and evil in the world and good is always going to fight for what's right and then once they achieve what's right they're going to then go back into their families and their homesteads and everything and then evil is going to plot to take it back away again right and that's that's what drives the cycle and so um, we just have to always remember, you know, uh, I think it was Edmund Burke that said evil prospers when good men do nothing. And, you know, what, what you and Heather have done is created an avenue uh, and, and there's many avenues, right? And people ask me all the time, what can I, what can I do? What can I do? I'm not a green beret. What can I do? I know something bad is coming, but what can I do? And I tell people, do what you do best, right? Everybody has talents. Everybody has skills and everybody has desires and, 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 and things like that that can, can contribute to the overall fight for good. And I think what you and Heather have done is you've created another avenue, another tool in the toolbox of, well, I'm not able to get out there and go to rallies, but I can give money. I can provide resources. And so your tool is what they can use and um i think it's very valuable yeah and and we've got some I mentioned this earlier but for those that are watching we've got some awesome news coming up um over this next week as we hit fourth of july independence day we celebrate independence as a nation but um give send go is is moving in those same steps of of gathering and creating further independence as a platform from having reliance on other institutions that may not um, bear with us the same fundamental ideas of what we're trying to do. So we have, uh, for those of you that are watching, we have a new payment solution that is about to roll out, um, hopefully right in time for 4th of July. Yeah, it's gonna move away from big tech companies that just think that they can rule the world with, uh, with, with their ideas of how things ought to be um, to some to another freedom initiative it's going to be built in it's going to be more seamless we also have cryptocurrency coming on board as an option for people to donate so moving away from some traditional legacy payment rail systems um getting away from the mastercard and visa only way to transfer funds so we, we're incorporating a whole bunch of things we've got alternative server set setups ready to go um in case um, we have issues with our servers. So we, we've we've progressed in looking at the culture and where things are at and saying our, our best step forward is a strong defense. And so we've really built out the platform to continue to be in a place where uh, we can provide our service beyond the reaches of some of these big companies and what they're trying to do. So we're well, very excited about that. Yeah. Well, and, and everybody should be excited about that because, I mean, you know, you're, you're basically right now you're at a 50% solution, right? So you're not going to censor anybody, but your payment processor at any time could choose to censor somebody. And here's a, the latest example of heinous technocracy overreach, right? I don't know if you saw the story about make a wish foundation is now no longer accepting, uh, any wishes from children, unless they have received the experimental gene therapy. Now no. think about this, make a wish is for terminally ill children, children that are, are, are basically set to die already. And they're going to deny uh, their program to anyone who hasn't taken a pharmaceutical solution to a problem that our bodies has already conquered. And so maybe that's your next adventure. If you make it happen, I'm not going to claim that it was my idea. <laughs> right. That is uh, well. I'm glad you you mentioned that because I have not. I hadn't heard that yet. And that is, that is insane. It is insane. Like it's just you know some of the stuff that you hear coming out. It just it it try. It makes me think like what world are we living in where ups you know right side up is upside down and and things are, have gotten so inverted from the reality of of the order of how things are are. Well, we're, we're we're living in a world that is dominated by evil. And yeah. it's up to us to counter that evil. So 
Uh, yeah, I mean, when I read it, I mean, the story I came across, I think it was the Gateway Pundit. And when I read it, I was just, I mean, I was infuriated because, I mean, these kids are already dying. Like, yeah, like, I mean, it, it just, it makes no sense. One, uh, kids aren't affected by the current situation in, in, in almost in any numbers, right? Uh, yeah. Two, um, the experimental gene therapy is not even approved for children. Yeah. And, you know, and three, these children are already terminally ill. So you're basically saying, unless you take the risk to expedite your exit from this planet, uh, you don't get to go to Disney World. I mean, it is, it's, it's frankly, it's disgusting. Yeah, it, abs absolutely disgusting. And, and the, the root of it is this, this hubris um, of, of saying that we are God ourselves and we know everything. And, right. and anybody that dissents is just a peon subject. And, and it's fascinating because um, it, you know, this is a fundamental Christian idea too that truth is only found in seeking right and, and you know jesus said if you seek me with all your heart you'll find me it's this it's this endeavor to to go after and to investigate and what we're doing right now in society is we're saying no there is no seeking we tell you what what it is right and we shut down anything because we can't have anything contrary to the narrative that we want to press and and it is, it's really radicalizing people in my mind, um, because when you back someone into a corner where they've been shut off and, and their voices have been shut down, you really push extremism. And it's, it's almost what they're doing by design in my mind, by, by this censorship, um, is creating a, a huge polarization where it, you, you can't even have a conversation anymore. And so, you know, all of these things I look at as our platform, as a, as a way to combat that. And, um, and we do that even in our, in our responses to people, because we get crazy emails from people that's like, you need to take this down because I don't like it. I'm like, well, then go somewhere else. Like, you don't have to like it. Right. Turn the channel, right? Isn't that what they used to say? We had three channels. If you don't like the show, you turn the channel. But, you know, look, the truth is written on our hearts. And that is why uh, evil says, well, then we must censor the truth because see, we are built and designed that just by simply hearing the truth, it resonates. And then we're like, wait a minute, you're right. That does sound more truthful. So the only solution to that, that evil has is to make sure you never hear the truth, right? Um, Bigfoot is misinformation, but yet it never gets censored, right? And nobody runs around <laughs> uh yeah looking you know uh, afraid of but there's no bigfoot crossing signs on the street outside of this house um mm -hmm. and so that really is the goal but what i also tell people is that there is a silver lining is that the more that they censor the more people want to look for the thing that they're censoring you see it really was a strategic blunder because we live in such a short attention span society that if they would have never censored the truth they probably, everyone would just be looking over it. Like they would just be like moving along their way and not actually realizing they were being lied to. And so yeah. they've it's actually kind of backfired because the more they censor, the more people look, then they find, and then they realize they were trying to trick me. And now they're more energized and, yeah. and, and wanting to find even more. And not only that, but tell other people. And I think that's really what we see happening here. And so Again, it goes back to evil prospering when good men do nothing. And, and people are starting to stop doing nothing, right? They're starting to do something. And your platform gives those who do have financial means a, a tool to be able to do something. And, and really, that's what we need. Well, I mean, again, I definitely thank you for using the platform. And we're going to uh, we, we're rolling out a whole bunch of cool things over the next several months. We've got a whole new site design. We've got new functionality. We're bringing on um, new new people, uh, hiring new people. Um, if you're a developer out there, we've got spots open, customer service, all sorts of different things that we're trying to, to ramp up because um, there is a massive need for alternative platforms like our own, and we're seeing it. And I can't wait for the day um, when uh, the alternatives that are out there are, are just dust in the wind 
and gives and go, you know, solidifies the spot as the household name of people to go to because we stand for freedom, you know, and, and we stand for open dialogue and discussion. And I will tell you, there are and have been campaigns, many on our site that I don't agree with. Right. And I'm fine with that because I think that that in those moments, that's when we can actually, you know, confront ideas and dig into what truth actually is in those things. Because well, and, and you let the people decide. I mean, they're the ones giving the money. So if, uh, if you don't agree with something, then it, you can sit back and watch and see whether it flounders or whether it, it, it prospers. So, but there you go, developers. Yeah. Something tells me that if you're unhappy where you're currently working and they're making you wear a mask and they're uh, ridiculing you for what you believe, well, here's a, here's a, a, good, a good American company that yeah. is looking for good talent and probably isn't going to do those things. Definitely not. Okay, so, so you've you've got a campaign on gifts and go. You're fundraising, which are also um, um, raising awareness about other things. You are a military veteran, and now you're out. And what are your, you know, even beyond the campaign, what are your future goals? Things that you're trying to accomplish. Well, I mean, my my future goal is to ensure that uh, that our liberties uh, remain intact, uh, that we restore our republic. Um, because we're going through a rough time right now. And, uh, you know, if you come across any of my interviews, it's much more dire of a prediction. But uh, um, this is this Give and Go campaign is a microcosm of the battle that we're fighting. You know, Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, uh, using their their power and their their wealth to basically destroy the lives of Americans through defamation and and you know, I'm really looking for, you know, just a few things. I'm looking for the, you know, I don't have resources financially. Um, and so I need, I need to be able to pay an, a, an attorney that is a bulldog that is willing to take the case, which, and here's another aspect of it too, is that most attorneys being turned out of law school don't have this constitutional foundation to their, to their worldview, right? They, they are, you know, big government types. And so when it does come to a case like this, where you're challenging the evil establishment, well, they agree with the evil establishment. So it's very hard to find good attorneys willing to take the fight to the enemy. Uh, or they've got this mindset that I don't want to make any judges angry by going against the system because I have to work with them on a daily basis. It's just a time of like a lack of principles, right? I mean, I remember you know, a time when Americans stood for their values, no matter the cost. And now it's kind of directly inverted, right? So, you know, guys, you know, whether it's a law enforcement officer saying, hey, I I'm doing this because it's my job. I don't want to lose my pension, even though they know it's wrong. And we really have to stop doing that. And you're a fine example of what I tell people all the time, which is if your employer is making you do things that you don't agree with, then quit. And a door will open for you, right? I mean, that is just the way it is. And, and you, you, you're a businessman. I was a businessman. And I will tell you that if you don't take the risk, you will never see the opportunity, right? So look yeah. at it not as a negative thing, but a, a, you're going to take a risk to open a door that possibly could change your life. And so, um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking to, to raise the funds to hire an attorney. And then I'm looking for veterans that feel like they've been defamed, whether it's in general or directly. Um, because what I would love to do is have a courtroom full of combat veterans in a street outside of the courtroom full of combat veterans so that the jury can hear that we are not the people that they keep trying to make us out, that we put our lives on the line for this country for their liberties, and we don't deserve to come back and have our lives destroyed by some anti-American rag like the Washington Post. So um, that's ultimately the goal. So, so do you have your campaign name in front of you again so people it, can find it easily? Yeah, it is gifsandgo.com slash combat vets v wapo. And that's combat vets with an S. Yeah. V as in versus, and then WAPO for Washington Post. Yeah. And you can also go to the search engine and type in your name, Jeremy Brown. That should bring it up as well. If you don't remember the URL, um, that will take you directly to the page. But um, 
definitely have enjoyed having you on, Jeremy. Is there anything? When I have, I have one more story to yeah. the to no, the to the power clear. and reach of Gibson Go. Yeah. So when my story about the FBI trying to recruit me to be a confidential informant against the Oath Keepers broke shortly after is when this campaign started. So one of the uh, initial uh, watchers or followers of my story gave through the campaign and then has been tracking it. And just within the last few weeks, kind of like checked back in on the campaign and sent me an email and said, you know, I, I was looking at your campaign and you're only at 1% of your goal. Like that is something wrong. I'm like, hey, you know, it's just not, you know, people just aren't. And she's like, all right, let me see what I could do. And she literally emailed Jim Hoff from the Gateway Pundit. And within, I think, 12 hours, the story has totally retaken. And since then, we've gone, and I haven't checked uh, my campaign lately, but I mean, it's literally gone from like 1% to like 3 or 4% of goal now. And that is the power of one person yeah. who simply said, no, 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 we need to get this out. And seeing that it hadn't been getting out and then using their contacts, their voice to really revitalize the story. And, and now I'm back on the interview circuit, which I'm not that happy about, but, <laughs> but I am happy that I'm able to do that because look, nobody should want to fight a war. And we really are in a war of yeah. good versus evil. And right now we're, just, we're trying to use our voice to correct it because nobody wants to fight the other type because trust me, I've seen it. And the combat vets out there will attest to it. It's, you know, they say war is hell. No, it, war is worse than hell. Okay, and so uh, I'm I'm glad to be out there and 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 using my voice to wake people up. But honestly, I really would just rather be petting my dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a fantastic story about. Um, the power of a share. We, we have that big share button on a campaign to make it really easy for people to use their influence and their audience to, to further the message of somebody. And so take advantage of that. If you guys are out there watching, hop on to the campaigns, see what Jeremy is doing. Click the share now button and you can share it to any, any of your favorite platforms to continue to push the message out about, um, his journey and what he's fighting for and how you can be a part in doing that because every share matters. It makes a difference. We see that actually the campaigns that are shared. It's a, it's one of the stats that we have the campaigns that are shared the most uh, have the most impact financially and the amount of people praying for them, all of those different things. So when you get people coming behind and sharing a campaign, um, it has the biggest impact. So definitely check that out. That's a great um, story about how sharing can make a difference on a campaign. So Jeremy, I appreciate you being here. And I, I guarantee you, I can pretty much guarantee you that as we continue to develop this and the scenery around this is all gonna change and it's gonna, and it's gonna build out. I know that there is an army of people out there, um, like, like I believe you know as well, that are willing to come alongside and stand up as they hear about these things. And so the right. mission again of Give, Send, Go is to, to build out a format where we can spotlight campaigns like yours and we can get the word out there to our larger audience and connect us as a, as a family, as a community. And so I'm excited for the future of where this is going, where it's going to go. And I'm glad that you're, you were willing to take a step in the journey, the beginning journey of, of this progress for us. And it's and not to make this the longest interview you've ever done, but there's one other aspect uh, that just popped back in my mind. And that is the fact that I was at my house one day. I never answer the phone if I don't recognize the number. But for some reason, my phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, but I answered. And I believe it was Heather, or it might have been a female member of your staff. But they said, you know, this is uh, so-and-so from Gifts and Go. And we're just calling to pray for your campaign. So would you mind <clears throat> if we prayed for your campaign? And I was like, oh no, of course. And so over, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, uh, over the phone, she prayed for the success of the campaign, not just the financial success, but actual, the, the, the change that the campaign is meant to make. And I tell you, when I got off the phone, I went in and I told my girlfriend, I was like, that, that was gifts and go calling to pray for our campaign. So 
that is the example of the type of operation that that y'all are running there and kudos to you i i i wish you guys all the success i hope you create a new make a wish foundation that, that that i mean because i think that's an opportunity but just the fact that you're out there and you're trying to help people that that's what you're doing you're helping people it is really uh should be commended man i i love i love those are the those are the best stories we actually it that's a new feature four months ago five months ago we said man you know our pray button's cool you can send a message to people and those when when people go into their their message box on their campaign and get to read some of those messages we've heard amazing testimonies of people like so encouraged by some of the stuff that they've gotten and read um and and but we said you know people have been driven into isolation over this past year and a half with with COVID and everything that's going on. And how do we, how do we as a company even push this boundary further to break through that isolation? And we said, you know what, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that there's something more than just money to be able to give to people. We can give them a little bit of hope with our words. The Bible says there's life and death in our tongue. Use your, use your words to speak life into people. It's like, Okay, well, let's hire a couple people. Let's hire a team of people and have them call campaigns, break into people's situations and say, hey, we're from this company. You, you are on our site and we just want to speak into your situation, speak some encouragement, speak some life, pray over what you're doing. And to hear that feedback is just a, another reiteration of, um, of the amazing things that God is doing in and through our platform. And we love to hear that. It encourages the whole team because um, it is, you know, you, you can get tired in the fight. And, and to hear that type of stuff is so encouraging. And I always pass it on back to everybody, like um, just, just the response that people are having to it. So super. Keep up the good work. Definitely. Well, to everybody out there, again, check out Jeremy Brown's campaign. Jeremy, thank you so much for being a part of this, being a guinea pig in our, in our, in our. Hey, this is, I will definitely don't mind being a guinea pig of this type. I'm definitely not going to be the other type of guinea pig. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and neither am I. Um, all right. Well, as we continue to grow again, we'll, we'll probably try to connect later and and have you back on as we move this thing forward and then uh continue the great work and all that you're doing and we will continue to stay in touch and we'll get this released and we'll share it with you and and share it with our audience and we'll get out awesome great thank you for the opportunity all right thank you mm -hmm.